All right, welcome back to TV5 News at 9, everyone. It is time now for Education Matters, and we are here with Dr. Craig Douglas, who's calling in this morning. Thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Douglas. How are you? I'm well, thanks, Blake. How are you doing today? Doing great for a Monday. Thank you for asking. So we wanted to talk about the tragic incident during a Monday night football game last week. It's been about a week since Buffalo Bills safety DeMar Hamlin had cardiac arrest on the field. So we want to talk about the incident and how it's bringing awareness for the need of automated external defibrillators or AEDs in public spaces like schools. So Dr. Douglas, how common is it for a school to have an AED and where should they typically be located? Well, I'm glad to say in the year 2023, they're very, very common. Mm -hmm. uh, a dozen years ago, not so much, Blake. Uh, I remember MCVI, the Michigan Cardiovascular Institute, made a big push for local schools to uh, receive AED devices. Um, in Carleton, we treated it like gold. We, we felt it was a real gift, and we wanted to be very careful with them. Uh, they're very expensive devices. Mm -hmm. I looked on the web, and the average cost is uh, well over $1,000, uh, upwards to 1800 to $2,000 a piece, depending upon the features. So at any rate, they were pretty rare initially, and now they're pretty commonplace in all public places, including schools, and that's good news. Uh, I liken them to a fire extinguisher in a sense, in that they need to be accessible by any member of the public that's in the area who sees a need for them. And the incident that you referred to just a week ago, uh, Damar Hamlin uh, tragically experienced cardiac arrest on uh, the national spotlight and yet uh, rejoicefully the response was immediate and appropriate and life-saving. Uh, they literally brought the young man back to life right there on the field. Mm -hmm. And so it can happen anywhere, right, Blake? I mean, it can happen in any of our gyms, or it can happen in a classroom, it can happen anywhere. It could be a student, it could be a, a staff member, it could be a guest or visitor. So they need to be readily available and accessible and really uh, like a fire extinguisher. If there's a fire, we need an extinguisher. If there's a cardiac incident, they need an AED. And with, you know, I like the liking it to a fire extinguisher because you need to upkeep those. So do you need to upkeep an AED? Yeah, and I'm going to confess uh, early in, in the times that we had the AD device, we didn't realize that they need to be inspected annually. Yeah. So we quickly learned that, and they're inspected annually now. And typically, pads need to be replaced, and batteries periodically need to be replaced. The average cost, again, according to my little research on the internet, is about seventy-five dollars a year. So it's a fairly nominal cost but it's an important expense again another example would be like if we have a very very good car and the battery's dead the car's useless mm -hmm. the aed would be in a similar funk if the battery was useless so they need to be maintained and updated and and that's an annual event in most most situations very good. And of course, for those interested, how can we learn more about how AEDs work and can we be trained to use them? Surprisingly, the training is widespread. Uh, all of our staff members are now trained in how to use the AEDs. Uh, they also are CPR trained. Mm -hmm. I know I, when I was at the College of Education in Saginaw Valley, we had training brought in by the Red Cross for our student teachers. So before they even were deployed out into the schools, they had this baseline training. They're very simple to use. It's automated. Uh, once the process starts, the machine actually talks to you and tells you where to put each paddle and what button to push. It's very simple and, and really, I would say, foolproof. And, and that's a great thing. The technology is just mind-blowing, Blake, as far as how efficient it is. And again, I would highlight, just a week ago today, we saw it used on the national spotlight and saved a young man's life. Yeah. 
And I can imagine that the step-by-step -step process certainly helps somebody who may have never been in that position and is unsure what to do. Dr. Douglas, anything else that you would like to add this morning? Just a couple thoughts. For more information, there are great resources on the uh, World Wide Web. I, I would recommend redcross.org, all one word, redcross.org. Red Cross is a great source for information about the training and all the devices that I, I've just touched upon briefly. Mm -hmm. And also for parents and grandparents, I would, I would encourage them to have conversation with school leaders to inquire where the particular AEDs are, are located in the particular schools. And even going into a contest or to a, a concert, I would eyeball where they are in that location in the event they needed to be accessed. I wish everyone the best and thank goodness we have the devices. Absolutely. I'll echo that. Dr. Douglas, thank you for your time this morning. Take care and be well. All right. You as well. Thank you. For more information about today's topic, make sure you check out the lifestyle page on our website at WNEM.com.